Thank you for joining us here this week on windserveToots.com. Um, this week we are going to be taking a look at a pretty great feature that Microsoft offers. Um, we are going to be looking at what used to be Microsoft Terminal Server Services. Um, now it is called Remote Desktop Services, RDS. Um, and we are going to be installing that role and setting uh, up the environment to accept RDS connections. We also are going to set up uh, Microsoft Web Access. Um, so if a person logs into an IIS web page, they will be presented with an interface and a choice of different applications and virtual desktops that they could get. Um, we're going to be configuring that. And I'll show you how to do um, some. If you're familiar with Citrix, um, Citrix calls it ThinApp. But basically what you would do is instead of getting a whole RDP remote desktop, you would simply get an application that would act as if it was just installed on your system. So pretty cool tutorial. Um, it's really neat if you kind of have the knowledge and you don't want to install, let's say, Microsoft Office on every single system or you have some sort of application that's maybe legacy you could run in a virtual machine or something like that and RDP to it. Um, so let's just get started. <clears throat> As you can see, we are at our familiar add roles option. And if um, <clears throat> I cough or if my voice is a little hoarse, I'm sorry, I'm kind of sick this week. So, um, But what we're going to do is we're going to start off by the ever familiar add roles. As you can see, we don't have anything installed on this server right now. So it's just a blank server. Um, we're going to go next. And you can see, instead of terminal services, it is now remote desktop services. So a little change there. This actually um, is a pretty easy install. Um, there's going to be some extra features installed, as you'll see. So you get a warning here. So let's say that you have a, a server that's already in use, and you have applications installed on it, and you would like to be able to present those applications to uh, your users. You want to make sure that um, after you do this install, they still work and they will present to you, your users. You might have to reinstall them. So, next. So there's a couple different things that um, that we're going to take a look at, uh, and a couple of these are so the remote desktop session host, and what this is going to do is um, this is your basic terminal server services type. Um, option right here. We are going to, we're actually going to cover installing licenses, which um, I've seen in a lot of videos, they don't really cover this, so I wanted to show you where it's at. It's actually pretty easy. Unfortunately, um, I did email Microsoft and, you know, see if they would give me one actual license key from one user that I could enter in here so I could physically show you how to do it. And they said, nope, one comes with the operating system already. So unfortunately, I can't physically enter in the license, but I can show you where it's at. And this is the remote desktop gateway. As you can see, it's formerly the terminal services gateway. And it allows basically people to connect over IIS, right, and over the internet. So as you can see, it's going to install IIS here. It's going to install um, the network policy and access services. You might recall that this was installed when we um, installed our routing and remote access server and remote server administration tools. So we're just going to add these required roles. And web access, basically, this will allow you um, to allow users to run uh, applications from their start menu on Windows 7 that are actually located on the remote desktop services server. So we'll install that too. And again, it's going to add some more required role services and we're going to select OK. I don't even know why they put that in there. It's not really like you're going to check no if you want to install what you're trying to install. But um, <clears throat> OK, so this is an option here. So network level authentication and do not require network network level authentication. So I believe what this is referring to is the difference between NTLM or NTLM version 2 and LAN manager. Um, so this will be for older versions 
of um, Windows operating systems and this will be for newer versions we are actually going to select this and um, if you're into security at all so land manager is not a secure authentication protocol it's if I remember um, it's a 16 bit um, operation and it's broken up into two bits and then it's used um, regular DES which is extremely breakable is used to encrypt the password um, and then it's sent over the wire so highly insecure newer versions um, if you are not in a network it's a little bit different if you are I'm sorry if you're not in Active Directory we will use what's called NTLM or NTLM version 2 and specifically maybe we'll do a video on securing NTLM authentication NTLM version 2 is a much more secure protocol. Um, things like SharePoint require NTLM version 2, even though your SharePoint server may be in a domain um, which would use Kerberos. NTLM, or I'm sorry, your um, SharePoint server and your Microsoft cluster server ser servers will still use NTLM. So you want to make sure that they're using the securest level of NTLM available on your network, and that will most likely be NTLM version 2. So, sorry about that little blurb there, but security is important. So we're going to click Next. Okay, so now <clears throat> this is basically the licensing option. And if you can understand, understand Microsoft licensing, well, you know what? Awesome, good for you. Um, it, is, it can appear fairly complicated. Um, I've been working with it for a while, and as far as I've been able to tell from talking to different people and different representatives, so this is the easiest way to break it down. So let's say you have one user and they have um, a laptop and a workstation um, and let's say a Windows phone. So each single user has three devices, right? So that may be an option where you want to use per user authentication. And this is actually what we're going to select. Um, if you have a limited amount of devices, let's say, let's say you've got 50 people that are working in a warehouse, um, but there's only, let's say, five computers, and Bob Joe logs onto the system, does what he needs to do, accesses the terminal server, and then logs off, and then another person comes on, or maybe they're sharing sessions, I guess would be more appropriate. You may want to license per device if you have less physical devices. That's um, the biggest you know summary that I've gotten from it talking to different licensing vendors and things like that so um, we're gonna select per user for now most people select per user um, and what we're actually gonna do so these are the users or user groups that connect to this terminal server so we have administrators but we're gonna use our good old accounting group you know accountants they uh, they wanna work from home you know um, so we're, we're gonna select them oh actually and it's G users that should okay so now as you can see in the domain we have the G accounting users so they will be authorized to log into our term our well it's not terminal service anymore remote desktop server so we'll go next and um, this here you know we just have a um, a smaller environment if you were to select these options basically desktop composition this will give users um, like the Windows 7 interface it's very fancy and slick you know similar to what you see in my desktop here um, they're transparent glass things like that audio recording audio and video playback in all honesty unless you have a big fat pipe um, audio and video playback doesn't do phenomenally um, in RDP um, RDS services so we'll, we're just gonna leave these unchecked for now but I just wanted to let you know what they were so go next and configure the discovery scope for this license server so so far we have been working in what's called a domain um, if you have multiple domains you would have a forest Okay, or I guess technically you, you have a forest anyway. But let's say you had multiple do domains and they were all in this one forest. This licensed server that we're installing could dish up Microsoft um, remote desktop licenses even to other servers outside of this domain. Since we don't have more than one domain right now, we're just going to leave this on this domain. Okay. And what we are going to do, so if you have a certificate authority installed, um, you would probably want to 
go to your certificate server and your environment create a certificate for this particular server but we do not right now so what we and this here um, you would want to get um, a certificate later so also if you were gonna have this public on the internet let's say public facing you could get a certificate from like VeriSign or thought something like that so but for the case of this exercise we're just gonna create a self sign certificate for SSL encryption so what this is um, gonna do though when we go to log on to the web page it's gonna give us a little warning hey this is a self sign certificate are you sure you want to do this um, and we're just gonna select next Okay, so create this authorization policies. Um, not right now. We can do this. Well, let's take a look here. Uh, we can leave that. We'll leave that for later. Do later. Next. And we already have routing and remote access server um, installed on a different box, if you remember from that tutorial. So we just need the network policy server. And these are all the default web server pieces that we'll need and this will give us basically what we need for this point so we got a couple warnings but that's okay gonna let this install and if this takes a long time I'll cut the video and bring it back when it's done okay so as you can see we're just collecting our installation results here and we're finished so we do need to restart the server for a lot of this stuff so we're gonna close out of here server must be restarted just click no through here and I will reboot reboot here and restart and we'll bring it back when this is done restarting okay so we are back and it did go through a fairly extensive uh, you know installing this stuff from zero to a hundred percent I didn't really feel that you needed to see this if you've been uh, or see that if you've been following along with the videos you've been seeing plenty of it so okay so now I'm gonna open up here. and we'll see and we're gonna have some warnings but that'll be okay we're just gonna let this finish configuring it's fine first thing that was a warning that we don't have a Microsoft license server installed so as you can see so this is um, the session host configuration and it's telling us that the no, the number of RDS cals is zero so what we're gonna do open up click OK let's close this out so we can reopen it Okay, so we've got a couple errors here, or um, just warnings, so that's okay. All right, so now what we're going to take a look at is remote desktop services, because this is the service that we are interested in. All right, so actually, let's do this first. okay so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna start off and we're going to show you how to do the licensing server um, it I feel that Microsoft could do a little bit better job in setting up the location of this but it is not something you have to change often so it's not a huge deal okay so what we're gonna do is we are going to go to as you can see here um, under remote remote desktop services RD session hosting configuration licensing diagnostics so we got those warnings that there's no licensing server we can see them here so what we're going to do is we're going to select the licensing diagnostics information down here where is it at okay here we go so summary one license server specified there's no credentials on it it's available but it's not being used so what we're going to do is we're going to select this start 
RD licensing manager. It's kind of hidden. I really, in my opinion, they should put it in the main tab over here, but whatever. Um, so we're getting a couple of little things that it couldn't connect to the licensing server. That's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to see all servers here. I'm just going to connect to this. And if you use a dot, you could type in the local host or the full qualified domain name, but if you just put a period in there, it'll bring up your your system. So you can see here that we have our system here. It's uh, not activated. You could tell by the little red X there. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to select activate server. So you see here, going to go next. And there's a couple different things that you can do. You can have automatic uh, connection to authenticate your RDS CALs via web browser or telephone. Most people will probably do automatic connection, especially if you're putting this on the internet, you'll have a connection. Um, I guess if not, probably telephone if you don't have an internet connection, but we'll just do automatic. So it's going to find the Microsoft licensing place. And so, do this. This is from when I was doing my demo. So company, win, serve, toots. And we are located in America or the United States or whatever they have it listed under. Uh, they got it under the United States. So it's basic information, first name, last name, company, email, at dot .wst, organizational unit, none, whatever. You know, you can fill this stuff out. So next. So now it's going to go out to the internet and activate your licensing server. Okay, so we'll just give this a second. Okay, and as you see here, finished. So um, unfortunately, we won't be able to do this part because I don't have any valid licenses. If you were to, you know, go out to your favorite license distributor, Newegg, or if you uh, buy licenses in bulk, you can you would be able to apply them. But we'll just click next. So go next again. And again, it's going to reach out to Microsoft. Okay, so basically, if you have a license pack, they give you a sample, and this is it, right? So you get your your license pack, and you get your license key, and you'd enter it in here for five or twenty or twenty-five users, and then this would determine how many people could log on at the same time to your RDS system. Now, unfortunately, like I said, um, I tried to give get Microsoft to give me uh, authentication code for one user, but they said no. So, unfortunately, we can't go past here because it'll just kind of give us an error. But at least you know where it is and how to get to it. it. Can be a little bit if you're not familiar with it. It can be a little bit tricky to find. So, at least our licensing server is activated. And you know, maybe if um, I start making some money off the of YouTube videos, I'll, I'll buy a license so I can show everybody to do it. It'll make me feel better about the quality of the video. So just remember, in order to get to this location, you're under Licensing Diagnostics and RDS License Server Information, and go under Start RDS or um, Start RD Licensing Manager. That's how we got to there. Um, this video is actually getting to be a little bit long. Um, I am pretty happy with it at this point. Do check out the next video. It'll, it probably won't be a whole um, another week. I will probably do the second portion of the video and this may extend out into a third portion. Um, well, we will actually be talking about the app manager, um, the gateway, and things like that. So do check out our next video here on winservetoots.com. We do appreciate you stopping by. Thank you very much. And please do visit the website and suggest any sort of videos that you would like to see here on winservetoots.com.